Hello, everyone, and Shabbat Shalom. I'm Rabbi Daniel Braun Friedman, the Director of Pastoral Care for Charles E. Smith Life Communities. Before we begin our services today, I wanted to take a moment to reflect on a very difficult week we've had, specifically the events in our nation's capital, just a few miles away. The events of a group of criminals that took over the Capitol. And while protest is certainly part of our nation's tradition, this insurrection was beyond protest. And we may have various feelings about what happened. I wanted to take a moment to pray for our country's leaders and there are many workers who work around them and with them, the police and security officials that protect them and thereby protecting our democracy. In the Gemara, in our tradition, our oral tradition, we hear about the rebellious elder. And this comes from my Rabbi, Rabbi Doblinzer, who pointed out this part of our oral tradition. If there is a certain rabbi who disagrees with the rabbinic court, that rabbi may show a public dissent, but he shall not incite others to be a part of that dissent. He should not incite the rebellion around him. And this was clearly the line that was broken by those that raised this insurrection yesterday. But in this mind, I wanted to offer a prayer for our governments, a prayer to help us through this moment, a prayer that God should be with us and God should send wisdom to all of our officers, our presidents, our vice presidents, our president elects, our vice president elects, and all of their officers. A prayer to help this country heal and to get beyond this greater difficult moment throughout the many great difficult moments in this year, which still continues. And pray we all are able to come together in unity to find ways to eradicate and dismiss all evil from our midst. And let us say, Amen. Shabbat Shalom. I'm Rabbi Arlene, a chaplain here at the Charles E. Smith Living Communities. And I am very happy to be celebrating Shabbat with you this evening. We will begin with Bim Bam. Bim bam, bim 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 bam, bim 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 bam. Bim bam, bim 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 bam, bim 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 bam. Shabbat shalom, Shabbat shalom, Shabbat 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 shalom. Shabbat shalom, Shabbat shalom, Shabbat 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 shalom. Shabbat 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 Shalom Shabbat 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 Shalom Shabbat Shalom Shabbat Shalom Shabbat 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 Shalom Bim Bam Bim 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 Bam Bim 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 Bam And now we sing a song of community with Hine Matov how good and pleasant it is for all of us to dwell together in unity. Hine matov umanaim shevetachim gam yachad. Hine matov umanaim shevetachim gam yachad. Hine matov shevetachim gam yachad. Hine matov shevetachim gam yachad. Hine matov umanaim shevetachim gam yachad. We now welcome in the Shabbat angels with Shalom Aleichem. 
שלום עליכם, מלאכי השרת, מלאכי העליון. מי מלך מלכי המלאכים הקדוש ברוך הוא. בואכם לשלום, מלאכי השלום, מלאכי העליון. מי מלך מלכי המלאכים הקדוש ברוך הוא. ברכוני לשלום, מלאכי השלום, מלאכי העליון. מי מלך מלכי המלאכים הקדוש ברוך הוא. צא אתכם לשלום, מלאכי השלום, מלאכי העליון. מי מלך מלכי המלאכים הקדוש ברוך הוא. So we sing the song every Shabbat, but do we ever think what we're singing? We're saying, welcome among us, peace to you, ministering angels, angels of peace, messenger of God, the Most High. Come in peace, angels of peace. Bless me, bless all of us in peace, and go in peace, angels of peace. And there are those who add a fifth verse, Shuvchem uh, Lishalom, or Lishalom, Shuvchem Lishalom, which means return to us again in peace next week, O oh, angels of peace. So we turn now to Lachadodi. We've welcomed in community, we've welcomed in the Shabbat angels, and it's now time to welcome in the Shabbat bride. Lecha dodi likrat kala penei shabbat nekabela. Lecha dodi likrat kala penei shabbat nekabela. Shamor vizachor bedibur echad. Hi ishmianu el ham yuchad. Adonai echad ushmo echad. לשמו תפארת ולתהילה, לך דודי לקראת כלה פני שבת נקבלה, לקראת שבת לכו ונלך, כי היא מקור הברכה, מראש מקדם נסוכה, סוף מעשה במחשבה תחילה, לך דודי לקראת כלה. פני שבת נקבלה, ימין ושמאל תפוצי, ואת אדוני תעריצי, על יד איש בן פרצי, ונשמחה ונגילה, לך דודי לקראת כלה, פני שבת נקבלה, בואי בשלום עטרת בלה, גם בשמחה ובצהולה, תוך אמוני עם סגולה. בואי חלה, בואי חלה, לך דודי לקראת כלה, פני שבת נקבלה. We now turn to the Shema and its blessings, beginning with the Barchu, as we formally call our community, our sacred community, um, to order. Baruchu et Adonai ha-mevorach, Baruch Adonai ha-mevorach le-olam va-ed. Praised are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who speaks the evening into being, skillfully opens the gates, thoughtfully alters the time and changes the seasons and arranges the stars in their heavenly courses according to plan. You are creator of day and night, rolling light away from darkness and darkness away from light, transforming day into night and distinguishing one from the other. The night Tzvaot is your name, ever living God, may you reign continually over us into eternity. Baruch atah Adonai hama'ari v'aravim God loves us with an eternal love. Ahavat olam beit Yisrael amcha ahavta 
תורה ומצוות, חוקים ומשפטים, אותנו לימד את ה... על כן אדוני אלוהינו, ושוכבינו וקומינו, נשיח בחוקך, ונשמח בדברי תורתך, ובמצוותך, לעולם ועד. כי הם חיינו ואורך ימינו ואורך ימינו ובהם נגד יומם ולילה ואהבתך אל תשים ממנו לעולמים ברוך אתה אדוני אוהב עמו ישראל. We continue with the Shema. Not only does God love us with an everlasting love, but we love God in return. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Barach Shem Kevod Malchuta Leolam Vaed V'yahavta Et Adonai Elohecha V'chol Levavcha V'chol Nafshecha V'chol Meodecha V'hayu Hadvarim Ha'ele Asher Anochi Mitzavecha Hayom Alevavecha ושיננתם לבניך ודיברת בם, בשבטך בביתך ופלכתך ודרך ובשופך ובקומך, וקשרתם לאות על ידיך, והיו לתותפות בין עיניך, וכתבתם על מזוזות ביתך ובישריך. You shall love Adonai your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all that is yours. These words which I command you this day shall be taken to heart. Teach them diligently to your children. Speak of them when you sit in your home and when you walk on your way, when you lie down and when you rise up. Bind them as a sign upon your hand and they shall be as a reminder above your eyes. Inscribe them on the doorposts of your home and upon your gates. Then you will remember and fulfill all my mitzvot and be holy before your God. We now turn to Shirat Hayam, Song at the Sea, um, which feels very fitting since we're starting the book of Exodus and we are just entering slavery this, this Shabbos, but we know that soon we will be freed. And actually this picture behind me is a micrography, which means the picture is made up of words and the entire book of Exodus in Hebrew is written in this picture. And we see here the Song of the Sea. When God's children beheld the power of the divine, they sang in praise of God, gladly accepting God's sovereignty. Moses, Miriam, and the people of Israel sang with great joy the song to you. No rati lot o sefele. Who is like you, God, among all that is worshipped? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in splendor, working wonders? Your children beheld your sovereignty as you divided the sea before Moses. This is my God, they responded, declaring, Adonai imloch leolam va'ed. Hashkivenu Adonai Eloheinu l'shalom v'ha'amidenu malkeinu l'chaim. Help us, Adonai, our God, to lie down in peace and awaken us to life again, our sovereign. Spread over us your shelter of peace. Guide us with your good counsel. Save us for the sake of your mercy. Shield us from enemies and pestilence, from, from starvation, sword, and sorrow. Remove evil forces that surround us. Shelter us in the shadow of your wings. You, O oh God, guard us and deliver us. You are a gracious and merciful ruler. Guard our coming and our going. Grant us life and peace now and always. Ufros alenu sukach lamecha. Spread over us your shelter of peace. Baruch ata Adonai, who spreads a shelter of peace over us, over all the people of Israel and over Jerusalem. Now our, our song that really feels like Shabbat v'shamru. Veshamru bene Yisrael et ha-shabbat la'asot 
et ha Shabbat le Dorot Amberit Olam. Beni uven bene Israel, o tili olam, o tili olam, o tili olam. Vishamru bene Israel, et ha Shabbat. La sot et ha Shabbat le Dorot Amberit Olam. Ki sheshet yamim asa Adonai, Asa Adonai et ha-shamayim ve-et ha-aretz v'shamru v'ne Yisrael et ha-shabbat la-asot et ha-shabbat le-dorot amberit olam. U-vayom ha-shvi'i shavat v'yinafash, shavat v'yinafash, Shavat v'yinafash v'shamru b'nei Yisrael et ha-shabbat la'asot et ha-shabbat le-dorot amberit olam. We now turn to the Avot service where we have some time to think about our relationship with our ancestors and um, it is in this Shabbat, this uh, Torah portion in Shmot, that um, God reaches out to Moses from the burning bush. And we're going to talk about that in my uh, words of Torah in a little bit. And although we don't have Moses' name mentioned here in the Amidah, you know, we say God and God of our fathers, and we mention Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and also the matriarchs we do bring Moses in to this prayer because the way we address God, God as the God of um, our fathers and the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, that is how God introduces God's self to Moses at the burning bush. So because we know this, when we say the Amidah, we're not only invoking our ancestors and their relationships with God and our relationship with them, but we're also thinking about Moses, who is, of course, one of our great leaders and teachers of our people. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu velohei avoteinu v'imoteinu Elohei Avraham Elohei Yitzchak velohei Yaakov Elohei Sara Elohei Rivka Elohei Rachel velohei Lea. Ha'el ha'gadol ha'gibur ve'hanora el elyon, gomel chasedim tovim ve'kone ha'kol, ve'zocher chasdei avot, u'mevi go'el ifnei v'nei ham, leman shemo bi'ahava, melech ozer u'moshia u'magen. Baruch ata Adonai, magen Avraham v'ezrat sara, ata gibur li'olam anonai, mechayim eti matarav lehoshia, Mashiv haruach umorid hagashem, mechakel chayim bechesed, mechaye metim berachamim rabim, somech noflim berofe cholim, umatir asurim, umekaye memunato lishene afar, micha mocha baal giburot, umito melach, Melech memit umechaye umatz miach Yeshua v'neman ata lehachayot metim baruch ata Adonai mechaye hametim ata kadosh v'shimcha kadosh ukdoshim bechol yam yahalulu chasela baruch ata Adonai ha'el hakadosh. You are holy and your name is holy and holy ones praise you each day. Praised are you, Adonai, the holy God. O se shalom bim ramav hu ya se shalom aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'al kol Yoshvei Tevel. O se shalom bim ramav hu ya se shalom Aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'al kol Yoshvei Tevel v'imeru Amen. 
May the one who brings peace on high bring peace to us, to all Israel, and to all those who dwell on earth. And let us say, Amen. We now say uh, a prayer for healing. We bring into our sacred space uh, blessings of health and strength and patience and fortitude for all those um, on the front lines, the doctors and the nurses and the pharmacists and the teachers and the social workers and the home health aides and the people who deliver things to our homes and the garbage collectors and all those who are keeping our cities clean and safe so we can stay inside and be healthy and safe. And um, as we now say the prayer for healing, which is adapted by Debbie Friedman and Dora Settel, um, I invite everyone to take a moment and bring into their hearts the names of those who are ill and who are in need of healing. And while traditionally we don't pray for ourselves um, at this moment, I think in these times it's absolutely fine if you want to ask God for healing for, our, for yourself as well. Mi shaberach avotenu Mekor habracha leimotenu May the source of strength who bless the ones before us Help us find the courage to make our lives a blessing And let us say Amen Mi shaberach imotenu Mekor habracha la avoteinu. Bless those in need of healing with refua shalema, the renewal of body, the renewal of spirit. And let us say, Amen. And we know sometimes when we're sick or when there are others who are sick, if it's a, a chronic condition, or if unfortunately where uh, someone is ill and it's uh, a, a disease or a condition that's terminal, sometimes we can't wish complete healing, right? We can't achieve complete healing because that's not in, in our power. Um, but in this prayer, by wishing them um, the renewal of body and spirit, we wish people comfort. We wish people to be healed and comfortable in whatever way is the best way for them and all of us to cope with whatever it is that we're going through at the moment. It's now time for Kiddush, and if you have a kosyai and a glass of wine, I invite you to raise your cup with me. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Borei Puri HaGafen Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher kitchenu be mitzvot avirat zavanu, be shabbat kocho be havav ratzon hinchilanu, zikaron le masse vereshit, ki hu yom te hila le mikrae kodesh, zecher le tziat mitzraim, ki vanu vacharta, viotanu ki dashta, mikol ha amim. Vishabat kot shecha biahava ufratzon in chafanu. Barochata adonai mekadesh ashabat. It is now time for some words of Torah. And I want to share with you a Dvar Torah that was written by my teacher, one of my teachers, Rabbi Mordechai Silverstein, who um, just is, has such wonderful insights um, into the Torah and the Haftorah portions. I studied with him at the conservative yeshiva in Jerusalem um, many times, and he, uh, I'm really blessed to have had him as a teacher, and I'm so happy that I can often share his teachings with you. So as I said, this um, Torah portion this week is Shmot Exodus, and it's the first Parsha, the first portion in the book of Exodus. And in it, we start with this line that always strikes my heart. 
it says there at it's about eight verses in and it says there arose a new king over Egypt who did not know Joseph and uh, there begins our descent into slavery because this new pharaoh this new king didn't know who Joseph was um, or chose chose not to remember or know or acknowledge who Joseph was and everything that Joseph had done for the people of Egypt and um, therefore therefore was able to get away with seeing the Israelites as this fifth column as these uh, intruders in the land of Egypt and then uh, as a threat and then ultimately to enslave them us but also in this parsha <clears throat> in this portion is when God reaches out to Moses for the first time because since our people are now enslaved and it's there's like 400 years that pass within this Torah portion of slavery. Um, God hears our cries and realizes that it's time to enact the Exodus to take us out of Egypt. So this is what Rabbi um, Silverstein wrote. He calls this the making of the ultimate prophet. He writes, how odd of God to have chosen a bush for his initial prophecy to Moshe, to Moses, his greatest prophet. One might have expected a more grandiose or impressive vision. Judging from the wide variety of rabbinic interpretations for why God may have made such a choice, the sages were similarly confounded. They were confused. Perhaps a bush, bush was chosen so that we might focus our attention on Moses rather than on the bush itself. <clears throat> so why was Moses chosen to be the nation's savior? To answer this question, one midrash gives the story of the burning bush a totally different frame of reference. In the original telling, God attends to Moses because Moses' uh, curiosity is piqued by this bush which burns but is not consumed. Right? In Exodus chapter 3, verse 4, it says, And God saw that he, that Moses, had turned aside to see, right? We're, we're taught that um, Moses, you know, was a shepherd and that he was herding his flock and a little lamb ran away and Moses went to retrieve this lamb to find this lamb and he sees this bush that's burning but not being consumed but not disintegrating. So he turned aside to see what was going on and this piqued God's interest. So here is how the story in the Torah portion is retold in Midrash. Moses saw their suffering and cried, saying, Woe unto me over what is happening to you. I would give my life to alleviate your suffering, for there is no work as arduous as making bricks. And so he decided to help them in their labors. Now remember, Moses was royalty. He was raised in Pharaoh's house. So he didn't live the same life as the rest of the Israelites, as the rest of his people, nor was there any reason for him to acknowledge their suffering because he lived on a whole different plane of existence. Nonetheless, he set aside his royal clothing and helped them as if he was helping Pharaoh. So he were, so we're taught here that Moses doesn't distinguish between like a lowly Israelite and the very highborn Pharaoh. He sees people in need, he sees his people in need, and he decides to help them regardless of their status or station. Said the Holy One, blessed be he to Moses, you set aside your royal position and went to see your people suffering and you have treated them like they were your own family. I therefore will set aside both the upper realm and the lower realm in order to speak with you. As it is written, and God saw that he, Moses, had turned aside to see. The Holy One, blessed be he, saw that Moses turned aside from his own affairs, from his own life, to see their suffering, to see the suffering of the people of the Israelites. And this is why God called to Moses from the bush. And this is adapted from the Midrash in Shmot Rabbah, which is the book of Midrash about Exodus. Now, so the burning bush wasn't really the focus of the story. It was no miracle for God to do the miraculous. According to this Midrash, when Moses stepped out of his world, put aside his own concerns 
in order to help those less fortunate for him than himself, that was the true miracle. This is what made Moses prophetic material and the ultimate paradigm of Jewish behavior. What does this teach us? That in order for us to emulate Moses, who was considered one of the greatest among us and was known to be one of the most humble of humans, um, we need to set aside our own concerns. We need to be able to look outside of ourselves, outside of our own daily lives and our own troubles and concerns and care about what's happening to other people. And that can be as easy and simple as saying hello to someone else, hi, how are you? Or it can be grander gestures of whatever you can think of how you want to make your mark in the world. And we can continue to do that, even if we are inside in our rooms, in our apartments, in our homes, and we're not really getting out and seeing people and interacting in society the way we were before, that doesn't stop us from being citizens of the world, from helping other people, from helping our fellow Jews. We now turn to Ein Kelohenu. Ein Kelohenu, Ein Kadonenu, Ein Kemalkenu, Ein Kemoshienu, Mi Kelohenu, Mi Kadonenu, Mi Kemalkenu, Mi Kemoshienu, No Dele Lohenu, No Dele Adonenu, No Dele Malkenu, No Dele Moshienu. Baruch Eloheinu, Baruch Adonenu, Baruch Malkeinu, Baruch Moshienu. Atahu Eloheinu, Atahu Adonenu, Atahu Malkeinu, Atahu Moshienu, Atahu Shehitiru. Avoteinu lefanecha ekitoret hasamim. Aleinu, aleinu l'shabeach l'adon hakol atet gedula liotzer breishit shelo asanu kigoyeh aratzot velo samanu k'mishpochot adama shelo sam chelkenu kahem v'gor aleinu kechol hamonam v'anachnu korim mishtachavim umodim lifne melech malche hamlachim hakadosh baruchu. Shehu no te shamayim v'yoser aret, u'moshev yikaro b'shamayim m'ma'al, u'shchi natuzo, u'shchi natuzo, v'gov femeromim, hu Eloheinu einod, emet malkeinu efesulato, kakatu v'torato v'yadata hayom, Yadata hayom vehashevota aleva vecha ki Adonai wa Elohim bashamayim ima avial haaret vial haaret mitachat ein od ein od kakatuv petoratecha Adonaiim loch leolam vaed. Bene emar vehaya adonai le melecha kol haaret. Bayom hahu, bayom hahu, yie adonai echad. Ushemo, ushemo, ushemo echad. We now turn to the Mourner's Kaddish and I invite you to bring into the sacred space the names of those whom you have loved um, and admired and lost. Um, if you are in mourning, observing Shiva, observing a yurt site, or if it is your custom to recite the Mourner's Kaddish, please say the Kaddish with me. Yit Kadal v'yit Kadash Shemei Rabba. Alma divrach hirutevi and lich malchute, Behaye hon of your mehon of Haye de Hobet Israel, Ba agala of his man kari vimru, amen, Yehe shme rabba mevorach le olamal omel maya, it barach vish tabach vit pa arvit roman vit na se, vita darvita levi talal shme de kudisha brihu, 
לאלה מן כל ברכתה ושירתה, תושבחתה ונחמתה, דאמירן בעולמה ואמרו אמן. יהי שלמה רבה מן שמיה וחיים עלינו ועל כל ישראל ואמרו אמן. עושה שלום במרומיו, הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל ואמרו אמן. May the one who brings peace on high bring peace to us, bring peace to all Israel and to the entire world. And let us say, Amen. We conclude our service with Adon Olam. Adon Olam Asher Malach V'teram kol yitzir nivra Li'et nasa b'chef sokol Azai melech shemo nikra V'yachare k'ichlot ha'kol Levado yimloch nora V'hu haya v'hu hove V'hu yie b'tif ara V'hu echad ואין שני, להמשילו להכבירה, בלי ראשית, בלי תכלית, ולא העוז והמשרה, והוא אלי, וחי גואלי, וצור חבלי ביעי צרה, והוא ניסי, ומנוס לי מנת כוסי. ביום אקרא ביעדו אפקיד רוחי, ביעת אישן ואעירה, ואם רוחי גביעתי, אדוני לי ולא עירה. I want to wish everyone a Shabbat Shalom, a Shabbat of love and peace and good health and friendship. And I look forward to celebrating Shabbat again with you next week. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs>